Hey guys, so today I am getting ready to work on some caramel apples for a Christmas pop-up that I have coming up. So I figured why not bring you guys with me so you guys can see how I make my caramel chocolate apples. So if you want to see how I do that, then just keep on watching. So first, let's start off by prepping our apples. I am using the Granny Smith apples because they taste the best with any sweet caramel or chocolate. Since they are a very tart flavored, it complements well with chocolate or anything sweet. So here I am washing my apples and checking them just to make sure that they are not bruised or have any damage to their skin. You want to avoid apples that have like bruises which look like they've been dropped or bumped or um, any apples that are discolored or have any imperfection because if the skin of the apple has imperfections when you go to dip the apple in the caramel or the chocolate it's not going to be a smooth surface it's going to be all bumpy and you want to achieve that nice smooth clean look so now that I have separated the apples that have imperfections with the good apples, I am going to start cleaning my good apples and I am going to use dish soap to clean them. So I'm just going to scrub and make sure I remove any dust or dirt that is on the apple. While I am doing this, I, you can remove the stem if there is one or you can leave it. It's whatever is your preference. If you're gonna use paper straws, then you do wanna remove the stem because the straw will not go into the stick. But if you're not using paper straws, then go ahead and leave the stem if that is your choice. Now that we have our apples nice and clean, ready to dip, I am gonna give my caramel a good stir. And you wanna make sure that your consistency for your caramel is nice and runny. That way you don't have to dip your apples into thick hard to work with caramel and as I am dipping you can see how I am rotating my stick to make sure that the whole apple is completely covered and tapping on my wrist to remove the excess caramel you can scrape the bottom to remove the, the excess caramel and then I am placing it on these little gold discs that way they don't stick to any of my other surfaces. And after each apple that I dip, I'll go ahead and give my caramel a nice stir. You don't want to stop stirring your caramel because it can start burning. And if it starts to burn, you're gonna get a lot of lumps and it's gonna be very hard to work with. Also, your caramel apples are gonna look very lumpy and you're gonna definitely tell that your caramel got burnt. So always continue to stir your caramel after each dip. And here, while I am dipping, I noticed that there was some air bubbles, so you can just go ahead and use a toothpick to pop them. And now that we have all our apples dipped in caramel, I am going to start working on our toppings. And for the first batch, I am going to 
use walnuts so i am going to chop them very finely the smaller the pieces the better you don't want to use large pieces of walnuts because the larger the piece the heavier it's going to be and then it's going to start to slide down from the caramel so the smaller the pieces the better Now that we have our walnuts ready to go, I am going to start to dip my apple into the walnuts. Just rotating them, making sure that each side is nicely coated. And as I rotate them, I tap them into the walnuts, making sure that they are nice and stuck. Tapping my wrist to remove any excess walnut that didn't stick to the caramel and placing it on my little disc. And now that I am done with these apples, I am going to start to work on the next batch. These apples are going to be dipped in milk chocolate. And I am just giving my chocolate a good stir, making sure that all the chocolate is nicely melted and I have a good consistency. And checking the temperature to make sure that my chocolate is not too hot or too cold. And now that we are sure that our chocolate is at a good temperature, we are going to start to dip our apples into the chocolate, fully coating the apple completely. I do like to leave a little bit of space at the top so that you can see the apple, the caramel, and the chocolate. And while I dip the remaining apples, I did want to share with you guys how important it is to make sure that you have the correct temperature for your chocolate. If you have chocolate that is too hot, you can get what we call elephant skin, which is when your chocolate has lumps in it that kind of look like the skin of an elephant. And that is caused because the chocolate is way too hot. Another thing that happens when the chocolate is too hot is that it'll start to bloom. And what that looks like is when the chocolate has a whole bunch of little white specks all around it, instead of getting a nice glossy finish when your milk chocolate is dry, you get a milk chocolate that has a whole bunch of white spots all around. An easy way to avoid using chocolate that is too hot is by getting a thermometer. The one I got is from Amazon, but any food thermometer works great and that will prevent you a lot of headaches and frustration always check your chocolate temperature before using it
so because milk chocolate caramel apples are my quickest to sell i am gonna make a lot of these milk chocolate seems to be everybody's favorite The next runner up for my most sold topping is the walnut with chocolate apples and since these sell so much I am going to go ahead and make another batch of these. So now I am going to start to drizzle the chocolate over the walnuts and I like to give my apples a good shake to remove any excess walnut that is not stuck completely to the apple and prevent it from falling into my chocolate. And once I have that removed, I like to go ahead and grab a spoon and just scoop up some chocolate and pour it over my apple.
to decorate my apples i am gonna be using fondant and coloring it with food coloring i am using color mill but you can use any brand of food coloring you like here i am massaging the color into the fondant and just adding a couple drops as needed So once I achieve the color that I am looking for, I am gonna sprinkle some CMC powder onto the fondant and massage the powder into the fondant. And I am just sprinkling a little bit because I don't want my fondant pieces to be extremely hard. And this is the mold that I am gonna be using to make these beautiful little mittens. And using my fondant roller, I am just going to go ahead and roll over the mold, making sure that my fondant is packed into the mold. That way the design will imprint nicely over the fondant. Just like that. So now I'm just going to set it aside so it can start to harden. So now I'm just getting my piping bag ready so I can drizzle over the apples. Using gold luster dust, I am going to paint over the little bow that is on the mitten so it can stand out more. To wet my luster dust, I am using lemon extract, but you can also use vodka. So now it's time to decorate the apples. I am just gonna drizzle over them. Put some sprinkles on the side of the apple. And then just using my chocolate as glue, I am gonna secure the mittens onto the apple. And just like that, look how beautiful she is.
Now for these apples, I am going to be decorating it with a little garland leaf mold that I got off of Amazon. So we are gonna be using two colors, red and green. And here I realized that I colored my fondant instead of red, orange, because the bottles look pretty similar. So I went to go grab red and I am just going to pour that over the orange. And that just helps the red stand out even more. So it was a win-win. Massaging the red into the fondant until I achieve the perfect red that I am looking for. Now it's time to decorate these apples. I am just gonna be using white chocolate and drizzling over the apple.
grabbing some sprinkles and sprinkling it onto the side of the apple and placing my little mistletoe on top of the apple. And for our last design, I am going to use this red fondant and using my embossers, I am going to imprint a little message that says joy to the world. And here I did not like the way it came out, so I am going to go back and add more food coloring to my fondant to achieve a brighter red. All right, so let's give this another try. Applying my body pressure to make sure that the message is nicely imprinted and using a cookie cutter to cut out the message. So now that all our fondant pieces are ready, I am going to go in with my luster dust and trace over all the wordings, making sure that they pop out more. And here I am using a brush that is a little thicker than my liking. I couldn't find my nice felt tip brush, so I went with this one, but I highly suggest that you guys use a thinner brush. To do this that way you'll get a nice clean finish when you're going over your wordings and there we have it 
it's looking pretty cute and i am just gonna add some sprinkles around the border to give it an extra pop to glue on my sprinkles i am just using water and applying it over my fondant and that makes it sticky and it'll adhere to the fondant And look what I just found, a little too late. So now I'm gonna go in and decorate these apples, sprinkling milk chocolate over them, adding sprinkles to the side. And using my chocolate as glue to secure the little message to our apple. And there we have our last batch of apples. Now it is time to package them. I am using a clear acrylic box from Amazon. I think it's four by four by four. Did some ribbons from Michaels and these cute little ornaments that I bought at Hobby Lobby. And here is our final product. Look how beautiful these apples look. I can't wait to take them over to the Christmas Village. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you watched all the way to the end, I am completely and utterly in awe and grateful. And may God's peace be with you guys. And I'll see you in the next one.